you go. I don't consider myself to be an authority on how to train dogs, so that's why I don't make lots of videos on training dogs. I've got a few, but bugger all, just the basics. Yeah, he's one of those dogs that just wants to be a pet. And there's nothing wrong with having a pig dog, it's a pet. They make good pets. So uh, a lot of guys that I know that hunt, they do no basic training with their dogs. They just like take them out and shout and scream at them when they do something wrong. But they never spend time, like five or ten minutes a day, just doing their basic training. And I think it's important. I think it makes your hunting a lot more fun. And uh, you get more out of your dog. And if you've got a real intelligent dog like these guys, man, you can do so much. Anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to head on over to Awi's place and see the sibling of this guy here. We haven't got a name still, we're still trying to work out a name. We've got a thousand names being sent to us, okay, it's a bit of an exaggeration, probably about 20 names sent to us, but we still haven't settled on something. I like tops, but Arwe doesn't. She wants to call her Pippi, but I don't, so we're still trying to work that one out. Been here before, have you, mate, eh? It's Arwe's house. Watch that tail. Kiddo, mate. Haven't seen you for a while, how are you going? Hey? Where's your brother? Remember me? You do, don't you, eh? Good girl. That's a good girl. You're a good girl, aren't you, eh? Want to play with your brother? And here is my boar. G'day, mate. How you going? Eh? He's like 12 years old. And the dogs train on him through the fence. They bark on this side here, and he stays on that side. All the new subdivision going behind Arwe's house. Constant machinery going. Somebody's watching through the window. around the house, eh? They've missed playing together, those two. Has she found the pig yet? Yeah, she's smelling. Okay. I find doing basic training or any sort of training with two siblings very hard. They want to play with each other. That's why we've separated these two. So we bring them together just so they can have a play and see each other. But really, trying to train two siblings or three siblings is difficult. A lot of people do it. A lot of hunters run two or three siblings and say they have no trouble. But when you get into the sort of advanced stuff where you're trying to teach them specific things, it's a lot easier if you've got their full attention and not their sibling beside them because what they do is they naturally become like a pack with two of them and they start to follow each other more than you. That's what I've found anyway. So we're keeping these guys separate for now and we'll hunt them together later on once we've done the training. Don't even think about it and there goes Arwee's dog just checking out what's going on. Don't think about the chickens mate. Don't think about them. looking at it she's looking at it no 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 just correcting her there she didn't do anything but her intention was just starting to loom a little bit wagging her tail she's happy she knows where she stands good girl that's a good girl a few people ask me at what age should I run my pup you know it depends on the breed these smaller dogs you could get away with six months a larger dog with a bit of, I don't know, bully in it or even mastiff, you wouldn't run for a year. And the reason for that is the crucial ligaments. They are soft and they're growing and once they break, your dog is pretty well stuffed. There is an operation you can get for it to fix it. It costs about $3,000, but the dog will never run the same again. So that's just one reason. The other thing too is it's just like these are like, you know, teenage kids in comparison to years. So you don't want to give them a bad experience and dogs have pretty rough experiences hunting pigs anyway they get beaten up and they get hurt so you want their first experience to be a positive one so you want to run them against i don't know a situation where they they're going to win they're not going to fail they can actually catch something or the other dogs have caught it and they get to bail it or hold it and it's not too big where it's going to hurt them so they have a good experience because if they get smashed over by a boar to begin with they'll end up not wanting to hunt for you in the future we want a positive experience. Some of you might train a pig dog off a pig skin first like that, drag it through the ground and leave the scent, let the dog track it. 
but I found the best way is just to use the training pig to get them barking at it and if you don't have a training pig obviously get into the scrub and hunt with other dogs and get a kill in fact training pigs are a funny one you are not legally allowed to have a pig in a pen and put a dog in the pen with it and rightfully so because it's just not fair on the pig it gets caned it's inhumane and it's just downright cowardly uh, but having it like we have with the dog on the other side of the fence and barking at it teaches the dog we get a bit of encouragement that species is allowed you're allowed to bark at that and when it shows interest in any other species like a sheep or a goat or a chicken just like that now we reprimand it straight away so we're starting stop proofing almost subliminally is that the right word I'm trying to find yeah as we're going through it's called the nullification method so on the farm I walk the dogs through sheep all the time and just completely ignore the sheep they get used to sheep being around them so when they're in the bush hopefully they don't touch a sheep. Never say never because they are just dogs and dogs are not too far removed from wolves. Quite a few of you asked me what's in the breed here. Well we call these wild terriers because Wade Waller who's a pig hunter and breeder grows them and his name's obviously Wade Waller and Waller Terriers is where the name Leave it! Don't touch! Good dog responded very quick that's good. But uh, I don't really know what's in them. I know there's a bit of Whippet and a bit of Sheepdog, uh, maybe a bit of Jack Russell, but Wade keeps it pretty well hid because for 37 years he's been breeding these to get them to this stage and he's added a few little bits into the mix that he just doesn't tell me, he doesn't tell anybody, and rightfully so. But uh, yes, you might see a bit of Jack Russell on there, I don't know, there's definitely Whippet in there. Had this guy since he was a tiny piglet. Pat was a guy I used to take out when he was 11. Found him in the scrub and gave him to me and it must be now 12, 13 years of age. Dogs have seen the pig and it's the first time ever that Chad's seen one. The girl's showing a bit of interest but Chad's not. If I wanted them to show interest I'd bring pace and get them to bark at the pig and then they'd be into it. Early days for that yet, just letting her find out herself. Chad knows something's going on but he's not sure what. Good girl. He's hiding under here, he's not sure at all. It'll all change once his mates start getting into it. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> oh, his guard dog wants to be a part of it all. It ain't happening. I'm not letting these guys play together. He's got some chompers on him. I'm making a marinade from a rabbit and I've started grinding some fresh ginger and add a bit more to it. I'm going to smash some garlic on top of that and add some lemon juice and some red wine and some other goodies. One thing I know that goes with ginger really well is garlic. They complement each other so good. Oh, it smells awesome. Ideally I'd like it fresh. I haven't got any right here. So next best thing, rosemary. Just leave that in. That's one lime going in there and I'm actually going to put more in. I'm going to put probably two or three and also a lemon as well. That's going to help break down the meat, make it more tender. That's three limes and one lemon. It's quite a bit. That's what I want. that we're going to add some red wine. 2013, that was a good year. But well, we're going to smash that into the mix. Nice red wine, it will give flavour and also help break it down. Olive oil on, and heaps of it. Heaps of olive oil. I like to not use sugar and stuff if I can help it, but I do want to have a little bit of this in for spice sweetness, not too much, just a very old sweet chilli sauce. I've taken the legs off my rabbit and there's not much meat on them. And I've kept the muscle without the 
bone because I'm going to marinate this in a snap lock plastic bag which I have water tested, it's still got some water in there I just don't want any sharp bones pointing in the bag otherwise we'll have a disaster so they're nice and smooth if you can't do that, you don't know where to do your cuts just uh, cut them with a saw and round them off with a bit of tin foil look at the size of these back straps inside there that's all the good tender chomping and chewing and the legs, not a lot on the front but we're going to cook this whole rabbit anyway I've just leak tested the bag one more time filling up with water which I'm going to tip out because I want to make sure there's no holes at all don't want to lose my marinade right one last thing I want to add to my marinade this is actually locally made here apple cider vinegar I'm a big fan of apple cider vinegar I have every morning it balances your pH level it's good for you I'll just put that in there that's also going to help this break down and give it a bit of flavour right now the trick is to get all this into that bag I won't be doing that holding onto my phone at the same time it's going to take two hands so we'll come back to it when it's in there this is going really well it's in the bag I've sucked all the air out so it's nice and sealed and we'll leave that for quite a few hours it's going to break the meat down quite a bit and add that flavour it's going to be delicious can't wait to cook it I'm having the dogs inside tonight. There's a bit of rabbit, mate. You can have that. The pace is going to let his uh, little mate have it. Here's one for you, boy. Not that fast. You know, B is. Now you go back in your box. Tomorrow, my mate Pat's coming around to take Poe hunting. There you go, mate. Put on there, too. The B's crunching up. Of course, there's lots of marrow on those bones and calcium. It's good tucker. Got an awesome fire. Dogs will be nice and warm tonight. In my camp oven, I've got some chicken stock that I'm reducing down. This is a chicken I killed a couple of days ago, and we've already eaten it, and I saved all the stock. This is going to be great tomorrow to do the rabbit in the camp oven. It'll be absolutely delicious. There's a lot of fat in that chicken, and rabbit has very little fat, so it complements it very well. I'm just going to reduce it down quite a bit, though. The plan today was to take this for a walk in the scrub, 243, suppressed, it's not a bad shooter. So I had the clock set for 4.30 this morning, I'm normally good at getting up early. Uh, this morning it went off, nothing wrong with that, it went off nice and loud, except uh, I never heard it, I slept right through it. I've been going pretty hard the last couple of three days and I think the body just said no mate, you just got to take it easy and I slept through it. My mate Patrick turned up here at Six in the morning about, I heard that him come in, by then it was too late to get my shit sorted, so I lay in bed, he grabbed Poe, I gave him a GoPro, so hopefully we've got some footage of something happening, because Poe's just catching everything right now, he's going out on a farm, and uh, he'll be bringing her later on back today, so keep an eye on that. Yeah, and I just slept right through, and I finally crawled out of bed at nine o'clock this morning, I haven't slept that long in a long time. Dogs are inside, very patient, down here. I was going to let Patrick take B, but he's on a farm, and I haven't... Hey mate, I haven't finished all my stock proofing with you, have I B? No. It's an ongoing thing, stock proofing, and I like to get it 100% before I farm hunt. We don't want any stuff up, do we fellas? Right, we'll let you guys out for a run. Good boy. There you go. Come on. Bit of noise going on there, fella. Hey, eh? it's all always about, eh? Calm down, calm down, calm down. Sit down. He's not knocking me over. Sit down. Stay, stay, stay. Wake up. Oh, pace running along with that big collar on. Doesn't really slow him down much. The old tail's wagging, he's healing up good under his chin, still got a couple of drains to come out, one down here and one up further. Legs looking good, it's healing good, his bum holes sort of reasonably good, it looked like it might have a little bit of infection yesterday, I checked it out and it's okay. Keep your eye on it though, infection's always the enemy. Dogs are watching the ducks. A world full of a lot of assholes. there's also some really good bastards and these are just some of them and the latest one 
I'm not going to say what he did to earn his place, but you know what you did, mate. Don't want to embarrass you. Quite hard to write and hold a telephone at the same time and film. I'm not very good at multitasking. There we go, mate. You're on the board. Boots for boys. We've actually got heaps of them. Don't need any more. As far as knives go, we've got a heap of those too, so thank you very much. That's the camp oven heating up, and I've got me chicken stock in there from one of his mates out there. And over here, I've heated the pan up with some leaf lard. What I'm going to do is, my rabbit has been marinating for about 15 hours, which will be enough. I've turned it a couple of times in the fridge. I want to save my, my sauce that's in there. I want to save the garlic and ginger and all the other goodies that are chopped up because I hate wasting stuff. I'm going to smash the rabbit in the pan first to brown it and stick it back into the camp oven. I want to cook it nice and slow in there for some time. This is going to make some noise. With a little bit of gentle persuasion, we managed to get it all in the pan. Oh man, it smells good. It really smells good. There was no salt, no salt at all in my marinade, so I'm going to sprinkle or grind a bit of this over the rabbit now, and that will help just sort of seal the deal. Right, heaps the salt on there, and we'll turn it over and do the other side too. Starting to brown off nicely. Put more salt on that side. And I'll put pepper in once it's in the mix. I don't want to put pepper on now because it can burn. And right now we're just getting this nice and brown. If this was a young rabbit, I wouldn't cook it so long, but it's a mature female. The more we can brown, the more it'll seal in all the moisture when it's in the camp oven cooking. You can see I've got that back nice and brown already. So we're just sitting it down on its arse right now. It's even still got a tail on me, how about that, eh? Let's fry that sucker up. Well, I think we've uh, well and truly cooked your ass, Gil. Browned it anyway. Looking good. I'd like to brown off these uh, legs at the front. I reckon this is browned off enough. It's pretty bloody good, isn't it? So, what I've got in the pan here with is leaf lard, which is rendered down kidney fat from wild pig. You might have seen the video a couple of days ago where I showed you that process. I can't remember what vlog it was, but you can find it if you want to know how to do that. And it's really good for frying stuff. Like that. I'm also going to tip my leaf lard remaining bit on top because there's not a lot of fat in rabbit. So every little bit that you can put on there will help. Just drizzle that over the top there now. Smash the lid on. And we'll come back to this in about an hour and check it and just see how it's looking. It's been about, oh, I suppose an hour and 20 minutes. Let's look what's going on here. Ooh. She looks pretty good. Smells fantastic. Man, the smell coming off that. Oh. Gonna give it a wee prob of the fork. Yeah, it's very tender actually, surprisingly tender. That marinade is broken down, but it's still gonna have more. I'm gonna turn it over so the other side get done. Oh, it smells delicious. She goes too easy. That's looking great. And come back and check another air. You can see the flame just how low I've got it, very low. Rightio, six hours in the pot. That's how long she's been cooking for, boys and girls. And she will be falling to bits. And I am starving. I am so hungry. Let's have a look at this now. Oh yeah, no, she's just one totally cooked rabbit. Oh, I've got one more thing to do. I keep basil growing in the kitchen because it's easy to grow, and I'm just going to snip this one right off here. If you take the tops off, they grow back pretty good. Take that one off too. Stick it in there. And do this. Now once that's broken down, we're going to add some butter. Get a nice basil paste going. Oh, it smells delicious. I love basil. It goes really well with rabbit. I'm not one of those people that's real anal about having everything organic, but you know, this butter, I mean, it's from grass fed cows, and look how yellow it is. It's a really good butter, so I'm going to use that butter. In with our basil.
Now look at this. It's like a skin. That's going to go over the rabbit. Mm. Now I'm not a big wine drinker, but a red wine, and one like this, this actually comes from the Arwitry Valley where I do a lot of my hunting. That goes really nice with a bit of rabbit. I've had it before, so I thought, why not? Check all that out. It's a big handful of seasonal salad. Everything that's growing right now. Finely chopped pepper on top, or bell peppers. We call them capsicums in New Zealand. When everything's fresh, it just tastes better, and it's also better for you. So one freshly squeezed lemon on top of that. And on top of that lemon, I'm going to put some olive oil. Let's call that a dressing. I'm not going to go shy on it either, because I like that. You need to get about six to eight cups of green leafy vegetables every day if you're a bloke. And if you're a woman, maybe four to six to get your potassium that you need. It's the biggest one, but all the other good stuff as well. Holy cow, would you look at that? Oh, it's just fallen to bits on the plate. It absolutely smells divine, and I'm putting my butter and basil over it. And it's just the smell coming off this. My God. This is, this is going to be a 10 out of 10. It really is. I'm just going to let that sit on there. Take it outside and tear into it. Mm. Oh. I'll tell you what, folks, we're not flash around here, but we have some flash tucker. Check it out. So, ladies and gentlemen, on the menu tonight, we have rabbit done with a nice basil and butter sauce. You saw the whole process. It took nearly three days from the time I shot it to ending up on the plate, but it's going to be worth it. A salad with some seasonal uh, lettuce and capsicum. And I've got a nice hot berry dessert. And we're going to start off with a glass of this here, just to prep our mouth for what's going to go in it. Mmm. Mm-mm. Rightio, the moment of truth. I'm going to start off with some backstrap. This is looking so good. I haven't eaten all day. It's the first meal. I'm breaking my fast and it's like five o'clock. But how is it really? Oh, mate. Oh, tender. Tasty as. Oh, that is unbelievable. Give this a try. You're going to love it. Mmm. It's a new recipe. Look at the size of this backstrap. It looks like a big giant piece of chicken. Look at that. Mmm. Not too dry. That's the thing with this. It can dry out quite a bit, being gamey, but I've got it just right. The trick is to cook it really slow. Oh. Mmm. I can taste the ginger. I can taste the garlic. Mmm. Oh, man. I'm dribbling at my nose. It's cold. That is really, really something else. I'm going to try. I'm going to try eating um, the shoulder. It's just all falling to bits. Just all falling to bits. Look at this here. Just all just falling to bits. I don't know if I'm focusing on this or not, but. Uh, it's just like, oh, that is supreme. The basil and the butter work so well. It's really good winter food, no, for winter. Rabbit's one of the most highest meats and protein for its size. Very low in fat, so it's important to have something fat with it. Mmm. All the work was worth it. Such a uh, common food, but such a delicious food. It's rabbit everywhere. Look at that little shoulder blade. With slow cooked stuff, I always prefer the moving stuff, like the, the shoulder and the neck. I'm going to take some of this over to Awi tomorrow. I was going to have this meal with her, but she uh, couldn't make it. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know what you're supposed to eat with what. Some people say red meat, red wine. Um, some people have different views on stuff, but I can tell you that this wine really complements it. It just tastes like it was meant to be with this rabbit. It really does. I'm not a big wine drinker. I probably buy two or three bottles a year. I'm more of a spirits man. 
but that is delicious. Whew. First meal of the day, what a great way to break my fast. I kind of want to put down the knife and fork and just like tear into it. Yeah, I just want to eat it with my hands. I'm not going to eat it with a knife and fork, this is how I want to eat it. You can see it just falls off the bone. Meat always tastes sweeter on the bone. It really does. This is why I like cooking a whole rabbit like this. When it's cooked off the bone, it stays more tender, soft, juicier, sweeter. Mmm. It's this is a it's a winning combination. Mmm. Oh yeah. Uh, I think I'll be eating a lot of rabbit this winter. Good luck with your own harvesting, your own hunting, your fishing, your gathering, however you're doing it. Give the recipe a crack. You won't be disappointed. It really is top. And uh, be good. You can't be good. Be careful. See you later.